Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I'm ready to talk to you a little bit more about getting the boat loaded down. We got our bass cat in, and I want to talk to you about putting um, my coaling system together and what I use. So, this is the TH Marines, the G Force um, Conservation Coal. This is the Gen 2, and it's a really good system. I've used it for probably the last five years now, and I'm going to take it apart. I want to show you exactly what's in there, um, what I'm using out of there exactly. And, couple of uh, things I do to make some adjustments so what it is you can see here we got our coal clips and this is what you're gonna put on the fish's lip when you um, kind of get it or when you catch them so basically what it does is you pinch these two together put it on their bottom lip keep it right towards that jawbone um, you can pick fish up with these gently um, so basically I'm using this more so to mark the fish, and then that way I can um, actually control where I'm looking at them, how I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna put this there, bottom of their lip, I'll pick it up and I'll pull them to the top of the water um, surface, and then I'm gonna put my finger in its mouth and pick them up that way. I'm not gonna hold these up for the most part with them dangling on there, unless I'm using my coaling beam. Um, these things, they stay on there really well, but you do have to be a little bit, um, at least wary because they can just slide off at times but you'll see they come with multiple different colors here we got yellow blue white red green and we got black so it comes with six and this is perfect because we keep five fish for the limits um, most tournaments are that sometimes you'll get a couple that are even less um, so I'm gonna take these guys here and I'll number these because my uh, actual scale I'll have a one, two, three, four, five, six, and it actually goes off to seven, eight um, on it. But you're going to number one through five. That way you know which ones you're looking at. And I'll show you that scale here in a little bit. But let's go over these clips first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to number these right here. You can write on these with a uh, Sharpie. So for me personally, I like green to be number one. Green is go. So it's a good start to the day when you get number one in the boot. So I'm going to take it. Put a number one on it and just simple like that i'm actually going to write that i usually do it on two sides of it um eventually throughout the year or if you keep using the same clips year after year um you learn which color you like for which number and it kind of just corresponds with it but i like putting these new fresh ones on these um hold really well so we got number one is green number two we're gonna do as um, white so we got two is in white, and then number three is blue. And this is a face off the system I used last year. It was what I happened to number them probably two or three, four years ago, whatever it was. And I kind of keep rolling with it. Um, even with this Sharpie writing on there, there is going to be times it fades. I usually have to write it back on there once or twice throughout the year, but you can see, just kind of get that right on there do it two sides so you can quickly see it um number four is yellow get that all on there and number five it's gonna be red so once you get your fifth one you're in good shape got your limb you can settle in a little bit and from there we're gonna have to do some cold so when these are floating around in my live well i can quickly like i said just I grab a hold of either the ball or right in here and I'll just pull them gently to the surface. That way I can see them. Um, you can see we got all of our colors there. So it's very different looking. And then we have this black one. So this is gonna be my cold fish tag. So it's black. I don't have any numbers on it. That's because I'm just gonna clip this when I catch one that I think is bigger than another fish right on its lip. And um, I don't want to necessarily use this to um, weigh the fish by. So when I weigh the fish, I'll weigh them before I put the clips on. It gives me a little bit accurate, more accurate of a um, weight on them. And I will use this to cold them though. So like when I'm using this cold beam here that we're gonna talk about in a second, I'll put that on there. But black is always the extra fish. That's the one that either is gonna get tossed back or I'm gonna replace it with one of these. So if number one was ended up being my small fish and the fish I just caught that was on this black ring, it'll get switched out, put number one on here, and then this goes back in my box with all my cooling stuff. I keep it in my cooler here, just a little one right in front of um, 
this main box here on the front deck. So it just keeps everything kind of organized. Keep all my coal tags in there. Um, I keep my G-Force um, balance beam here. So you wanna see this, you hold it there and you'll see it's gonna to go to balance. And you wanna check this when you first get them, make sure it looks like it's accurate. Um, every once in a while you'll hear somebody using a coaling beam that's off, but you can see that right there is pretty much dead on. Another thing you wanna do here to make sure your coaling balls all weigh the exact same amount. That can be a huge difference in a year. I've heard horror stories of buddies that have been using a different coaling system and they were just basing it off of having a fish clipped here and a fish clipped on say number one and all of a sudden number one actually weighs more than the coaling ball here and you end up throwing the wrong fish away. So make sure you check them. Um, I hold it just like that. You can see it's perfectly balanced. So I'm gonna base it all off number off of black. So green's good. And I'm gonna go through each one of these numbers. So I'm gonna go green. We're gonna go white next. Um, and when I'm calling actual fish, you wanna start getting down. I usually go to the bottom of my boat. That way, in case somebody decides to jump or flop around, um, you're in good shape. So number two there looks good, so that's good. We're gonna do blue is number three. So we're gonna get that on there. Again, that's, well, let's say, there you go. Um, yeah, no, that's, it's pretty accurate. There we go. Mess with that a little bit. Just make sure you got that all in the right spot. Now that looks, looks pretty good. It's not drastic. I'm going to pay attention to that. I might even set that one aside and compare it to another ball because those first two are perfect. Let's see this guy here. So you can see that one. Same thing. Then we got yellow. Yellow looks. Yeah, no, that one's good too. So we're in good. All right. So now that we've checked all of our cooling balls, we got our um, beam in good shape. We're ready to start um, actually putting the fish in there. I want to talk to you a little bit about fish care. So. So with our G-Force um, cooling systems, I'm gonna have, you can even actually put these balls right in. So the G-Force cooling system, they actually send you with this little bar here. This is to clip on your cooling weights. So you got your little balls here and you can mount this right inside of your live well. It's got, it comes with that, it comes with two little screws and it just makes it nice and easy, keeps them stored right where your fish are, it makes it nice and Simple to get to your fish. That way you can keep yourself most efficient because that's what's most important on the water. You want to be efficient. You want to make sure you're moving as quickly as you can. And from there, you can uh, catch more fish. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is G-Juice. I take this everywhere with me. I actually bring two of them in the boat. So got this one here that you can see was a partial from last year. It's about half of it full. Um, I keep this in this way, um, I like to keep those lids, just make sure you keep them tight. I actually only will, there's um, a cardboard or little um, insert in there, like a foil. That way it doesn't leak when they're shipping it. But once you take it off, these lids aren't always um, super tight. Sometimes I like to leak a little bit. So keep that tin on this one. You can squeeze it just like that and um, it'll fill it up and then you can fill, dump it right into your live well. Uh, but I also like to keep it in that this one gallon baggie just to make sure you don't have any leaks but you can see it here um this is the original box it'll come in it works really well i catch a fish um i'll put a little bit in the live well right away if i seems like i get one and i hook them in the tongue or it's bleeding a lot because of it you actually take this and just dump it right on that cut do it for two three seconds Give it a second and then I put a little bit more and then I'll put them in the live well with the G juice in the live well. Um, and I'll check on them in like two, three minutes just to pull them back out. Just make sure it's not bleeding still. Um, it works really well. Some people like to use Mountain Dew, but I always have G juice in my boat so I don't have to worry about that. Um, and how this basically works is you take a half ounce, which you can see is half of this little um, chamber here and you dump it in. So. It treats 30 gallons, so you gotta just adjust it accordingly to 
how big your live wells are. It works for fresh water, salt water. Um, what else they got in here? It, basically what it's doing is it's reducing the ammonia that's in there and um, it kind of calms the fish down. So it relieves stress, it helps with their slime coat. It just it makes it all around more healthy for the fish. Um, it's also non-toxic, which is important. You don't want to be hurting the fish uh, yourself or whatever. But G-Juice, make sure you have it. And the last thing I want to go over with you um, is my, basically the whole system. Up. So I'm going to go pretend I'm fishing today. How I catch the fish, how I weigh them, put the clip on, and keep going. So we're going to start with the weighing of the fish. So give me one second. All right. We got my scale here. Um, it's a Rapala. It's a 25, or this is actually the 15 pound scale. So it does up to 15 pounds. So if you plan on catching a bass bigger than that, you better get the other one. I think they have a 25 and maybe even a 50. But I really like this scale. Don't work with them at all, but they make a really good product. It's very consistent. It might not always be exactly on with the tournament scale, but it's usually within, I would say, a quarter pound or so over five fish, which that can be the difference between a wave bouncing around. I usually run these for about a year, maybe a year and a half. And it seems like then they start to not want to um, lock in quite as well. So I go through quite a bit of them. Uh, this guy, actually, the batteries are dead, so... I couldn't find any batteries, but you'll bear with me. Basically, what you're gonna see on here is it's got a one, two, three, four, and then number five is down here. So I could click in there, weigh each of those fish. So once I have my five fish, we're gonna have number one, two, three, four, and five, like we were talking about, all put on these fish. They're all gonna be floating around in there. And then I'm gonna catch number six, and that's gonna be my coal fish. Hopefully, that's going to hopefully be bigger than the rest of them. So we got the five here. Those numbers on these balls will correspond to what is on the scale when I turn it on. And then I'm going to catch number six. And that's where we're going to put this in their lip. I'm going to actually weigh them first because, I, like I said, I don't want to weigh the fish with the actual um, coaling ring in there because it adds, I don't even know how much it weighs, but say it's a quarter pound or whatever it is but it just makes it more consistent. You have to either weigh it with them on all of them or off all of them, and I usually go with off all of them. But um, if one is bigger, then I'm gonna replace it in there. I'll let that smaller fish go. So say number four was my smallest fish of the day. It was one pound, two ounces. So I'm gonna take that off the black one, put them on here, put them in your bag, and then I'm gonna call them out. That way I know um, I got rid of my smallest, that upgraded, say the black one that I put on the number two now was a two and a half pounder. I'll mark that in here just by simply clicking it and it makes it really simple and easy. Um, if you get one that's really close, say you have two that say two and a half pounds and they're your smallest fish that you're trying to cull, that's when I'm gonna throw them on this culling beam. Um, I take them just directly with that. Uh, uh, your culling beams right here, your balls number one and say number two is the other one and just check them you know the fish is bigger because it leans that way more so say number one's leaning this way by quite a bit i know number two's smaller so i'm going to take number two off unhook them throw them into the water and then that black one is going to go on to number two so you just make sure you're paying attention um i tend to believe my scale and try not to use the culling beam as much as possible that's just because when you're using that culling beam, it's one more time you have to touch the fish. You stress them a little bit more. Um, it can lead to fish um, either passing away and then you lose weight at the weigh-in, which is no good. Or um, it's just not efficient. I like to be in and out that live well as fast as I can. You don't want to have to be messing with them for a long time. So that's basically my culling um, system. I use this Rapala scale, TH Marine, um, conservation cold kit they got very good their g juice and the combination of those three things is how i catch more fish i catch them quicker and just keep everybody healthy and alive so thanks for watching i'm gray buck i hope you guys had a great time um i have more videos on my youtube channel if you want to go check out gray buck fishing at instagram or facebook lots of good things on there too i keep you up to date with all the tournaments so if you have any questions put them in the comments below or if you have a topic you want to talk about let me know i'm happy to do it so well until we talk next time have a great day